Thank you so much, Steve. This is a long, you know, wait, awaited <laughs> session and talking with you. We've been interacting and I'm so glad to be a guest in your podcast, Steve. Thank you so much for inviting me. Gosh, so what I do, <laughs> I like to see it as unleashing the fearless warrior. Unleashing the fearless warrior within those passionate service-based business owners, coaches, consultants, um, experts, creatives that want to make a difference in the world. And I help them package their gold dust of skills, experience, gifts, talents, and package that into an online training course so that they can give that gift in the form of a course, in the form of a program, to be a tribe that has an issue that they're trying to solve. Mm. So putting it in a nutshell, I help them build their online training courses so that they can make a greater impact in the world and create this ripple effect. And very often it's like, for them, it's like sailing uncharted oceans. Mm. So they don't know quite where to go, which direction to take, they're quite confused on how to start. Mm -hmm. They know the how exciting is it is <laughs> when you see it as an adventure <laughs> and I gold love dust. That. I love treasure. that. We're, we're hunting for treasure. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, here's the one thing I I, I love that every time I I hear you talk, I always get that sense of it comes out and you and you want all of us to tap into that fearless warrior mm. why is that why is that fearless warrior piece like so important for you oh boy steve <laughs> steve that is a great question you know let's go about nine years ago and i'm standing in front of a pawnbroker's shop steve with my precious belongings in one hand two companies had gone bankrupt it spiraled down an import export company and a web designing branding company. After five years of running it, we had spiraled down. And I was standing in front of that pawnbroker shop. And as I'm about to hand over this precious belongings, this was the last that I had. We'd sold everything. Mm -hmm. You know, as I, as I was about to utter those words, that lump in my throat, just I couldn't say it because I knew what was about to happen mm -hmm. was going to change the entire course of my life. I knew in that moment that, Veronica, this is not the kind of life that you want to be living. Mm -hmm. And it was in that moment, Steve, that I heard her voice, mm -hmm. the warrior of which I speak so much about. Mm -hmm. And she said, are these the kind of choices that you want to be making? Mm -hmm. Is this how you want to show up in the world? Living somebody else's or living according to somebody else's expectation of who you, sh you should or shouldn't be, living somebody else's dream and just being passive, passively living life. Is this how you want to shop your kids? Back then I didn't have any kids, now I have two. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer was a hell no. Yeah. It was a hell no. And I recognized that voice. It was her, the fearless warrior, caged. Mm. Caged mm. within bars of doubt, uh, lack of confidence, lack of self-identity and the kind of values, right? All those crippled her and kept her <laughs> caged. Mm -hmm. So it was in that moment, Steve, that I really had to take responsibility for my life. And I feel it was in that moment that V Powerless transformed to V Power. Mm -hmm. I think it was in that moment mm -hmm. that V Power was given birth to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it was in that week, I remember, I stumbled upon this audio book, Conversations with God. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Nothing, nothing Very familiar religious. with it. Very familiar yes. with it. Donald, uh, uh, Neil Donald Walsh. Correct. And it was nothing religious, but it had so many questions and so many answers that I had. Because when I, had, I was standing there and selling those precious belongings in the pawn broker shop, the question was, who was I? after every single thing I had identified myself with ceased to exist. We sold everything, the cars, the equipment, the furniture, like we had to, of course, pay it back the debt. And that led me to the, to the journey of self-discovery. So who am I? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that book really 
opened my eyes and made me realize that, you know what, Veronica, you had created that rut that you were in. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that meant I could recreate something else. And that's where the journey began. And I immersed myself, you know, I used to be a teacher as well. So I was, almost about, I was all about inspiration and impact. I had kind of derailed, right, with the businesses and following somebody else's, you know, dream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then I had to come back on track and I immersed myself into part, uh, personal development. I, I, I didn't know it was called reprogramming. I didn't yeah. know it was called rewiring your brain or your mind, but I was reading, I was listening, I was, I was planting seeds. Yes. And when they started sprouting in the way I spoke and the way I showed up, not everybody liked it. Because mm. this is an, a, a, mm. the birth of something, of something powerful. She started to know her worth. She started to believe in herself. She started asking questions of who she was and what she wanted. Started going for that. Not everybody likes that. Some people like it when you're passive. Mm -hmm. So that's where my, my marriage pretty much was on the rocks as well mm -hmm. in that period. So there's lots going on. Fast forward. I say coaching found me. Mm. It stumbled upon my Facebook feed. Oh, workshop, two days, come and see, you know, goals, potential, unlock belief systems. It's like, oh, that's my language, you know, after all, all those years. <laughs> so I went and I was like, wow, Steve, there is a way of packaging this. I was already fearless in that right. warrior state of mind mm -hmm. over the years. So she was there. But this is where the second part of the journey began. Mm -hmm. So she, she trained to become a coach because she wanted to inspire, she wanted to impact, but she was missing something, some tools, the weapons mm. on how she could serve more powerfully. So that's where I started learning other skills, such as, you know, how to craft my story, how to own it, how to bring it forth and share it and use it as an instrument mm -hmm. rather than, you know, um, some kind of a crippling shackle that's holding me back. So now I, I open up about my story because it's my instrument to empower, inspire others. I had to learn how to, you know, find my niche. Who was my tribe? Like, who did I really want to serve? As a coach, they say, go and work in the corporate world. I don't know. I wasn't a corporate girl. I had been a teacher. You'd see me on the floor with the kids all around fun, playing. I couldn't see myself in that. That wasn't my tribe. That was another coach's tribe because that was her story. Right. That wasn't right. my story. That's right. See? They are great coaches I know and they are, they've been in the corporate world and they want to go back there and they want to change things. Mm -hmm. That was in my story. Mm -hmm. So how, how to craft your story and I owned it. And when I crafted my story, I found more of who I was. So I evolved as a coach. So now what I do is I help other coaches uprising because I know the journey. Mm -hmm. They're missing the tools. Mm -hmm. And that is what I created the Fearless Warrior Formula it is a set of tools, mindset, of course, but also structured tools that you need to equip yourself with to serve your tribe. Right. So, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Answering the question. That is why today we, I stand forth before you as that fearless or that warrior spirit, that guiding spirit, because there's so many warriors out there that are losing out on your dreams because yes. they don't know how to navigate that waters and then they gave up somewhere along the line that's so true you know i know we, we've had a previous discussion and your mother was a teacher and so that's that's your example of of, of one probably one of a fearless warrior but also somebody that you truly admired but you realized that that wasn't your path but you also said something that i just really want i thought was really profound and i think everybody needs to kind of um, gravitate to you. You said that you created your circumstances, which also means that you can recreate your circumstances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think everybody understands that concept or understands okay. how to how to do that. Does that make Let sense? Me, I, I think that's absolutely. powerful. I think that's powerful. Let me explain what that actually looks like. So first of all, we work around the principles of the universe. We work around the principles of energy. Everything that is and ever was and ever will be is matter, mm -hmm. right? Look at the chair that you're sitting on the table. Look at my hands, my nails, my hair. All that is matter. Everything in the universe is made out of matter. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it on a deeper level, this is 
matter, but it's made up of molecules, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And within each molecule are atoms. And when something is solid, the atoms are close together. When it's fluid, the atoms are separated, right? Right. But let's look at the atom of which this is made of. Within the atom is the nucleus. Mm. And let's dig deeper. Within the nucleus is pure energy. Yes. Steve, yes. we are pure vibrational beings. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Our thoughts are vibrational. It's just a vibrational system that is going on in our minds, the sparks, the connections. These are this all energy vibration uh, emitting into the universe, into the world out there. Mm -hmm. What we, we create and we think within is created without. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the principle of energy. So knowing that energy is creative, mm -hmm. energy mm -hmm. is, cre that is a universal principle. Correct. So where are you going to place your energy so that you create if you know that energy is creative? You see, when we understand these principles, you can apply them and use them in a more powerful way. So yes, that meant I had to change my thoughts because my thoughts are energy and I had to place focus on what I wanted because when I place focus on that, that's energy, that's thoughts. The higher the frequency, the more often, the more focus I get, like that laser beam of light that cuts through steel, mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to create and there's no other way it's not it's going to happen. I'm going to create that because that is the principle, that is the law. Where you place focus on is that what you're going to create, the good and the bad. So that's what it actually means when you want to rewire and reprogram. It's meaning just using your energy, of which you are made of, in a more strategic way. Yeah, excellent. We well, you know I, I, every time we, we have a conversation, um, <laughs> you know, I, I I'm feverishly writing down notes and, and just and, and taking notes as you as you speak. So that's why I got my head down and yeah. goes on video. People will see me like kind of looking down because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm taking notes. Um, and I have a whole list of questions, but I'm not even I don't even care about the questions right now. Yeah. Because that's... because you know one of the things that. Every anytime we, we last time we spoke, we talked about like leadership and we, we started trying to we had this elusive you know, like definition of leadership. Anytime I have a coach on or somebody who coaches coaches, I often want to ask this question because I I know when people come to you and people come for a coach or an exe executive coach, they're not really coming for coaching. Right? So so in that context, how would you describe or define like executive or coaching? Um, from your perspective. So let me demonstrate it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I love that I said that because every time, anytime I try to, when well, somebody asks me to define something, I either demonstrate it or I or I start by saying what it's not. Right. So so that's why so, I'm in agreement with you. <laughs> yeah. So it's like so. What do they come to me for? So first of all, you know, they don't really come for coaching. It's something deeper. So yes. whenever I have that first contact, I ask. Why are you here? Yeah. Yeah. And when I say, why are you here? Not why are you here on earth or yeah. in this yeah. world? No, why, why is this happening? Why are you in front of me? And I'm in front of you and we're having this conversation. And then they would say, oh, well, well, I want to be a better leader. I want to be a better manager and manage my team, right? And get the more, you know, um, effective. Or if it's a different kind of coach, maybe the ones that I'm working with that I want to create an online presence, they'll say, well, I'm here because I have a bit of doubt and I don't quite know what to, um, direction to take, right? And I lack kind of the, the confidence in all those things. Mm. And I'm like, no, that's not. What do you really want? Yeah. Because the truth is, yes. the lack of confidence, the doubt, lack of focus, those are just conditions. Mm, mm, Think about it. Mm, mm. Those are conditions. They're not your real problems or they're not the real issues. It's when the outcome is undesirable. Now that's the problem. So if, for example, somebody lacks confidence, they can still be showing up. They can still be achieving your goals. So it becomes a problem when the outcome is undesirable. So then I say, so imagine that that fear didn't exist. Imagine that you had crystal clear clarity. Imagine that you could manage your team to the best of your abilities, right? What would that mean to you? Mm -hmm. Then they go deeper. You see, we're digging deeper. So now we're getting to the values. What would that mean to me? 
well, would it mean that, you know, I, I would, uh, they would look up to me and maybe I'd be more, I'd have a better reputation, that we could hit our goals. Mm -hmm. And what would that mean to you? Mm -hmm. Well, then that means I could, I could hit, if I hit the financial goals, I could, you know, have a career advancement or I could uh, help and impact more people. And what would that do for you? You know, we dig deeper and then they finally say, well, then I could finally afford to take my mother to a good health hospital so that I don't have to relive the story that she lived with her mother. Or I could guarantee that my children went to the best school so that like I didn't have the chance to, for example. So then the reason why we're sitting here together is exactly that. Yes. Oh, gosh. Oh, so that leads me into, uh, mm -hmm. I think the first time I, I came in contact with you um, was when I heard you start speaking about the gold dust and how you help your your clients who are coaches take their their gold dust the things that are special about them and you turn and they help them turn it into gold nuggets and for me that whole visual visualization of like you know the the, the, the gold dust kind of like you know being being out there and being able to like okay and identify what those 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 little pieces are as those flakes are as an individual and as an executive coach and then actually turn them into something tangible wow that's that's is that's really powerful and well that's in your name it's the name, name of your business right it's called v, it's called v, it's v called power. v power it's called v power right v so, power coaching yes. v power coaching so there it is right so you go so how do you help them one identify those um those 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 uh what are they, that gold dust Mm -hmm. and then help them translate that because i think it's i think it's it'll be constructive not just for coaches who are listening but also just for individuals um yeah. listening as well yes so it's a process that we use or that i use to discover this gold dust now it's like almost like a mind map or a map mm -hmm. that we navigate mm -hmm. and your gold dust first of all what is it these are your experiences yes these are your proof indicators, things that you have achieved, things that you have accomplished. But mind you, personally and professionally, I have been through a separation and it was very peaceful. That is my accomplishment because looking at the circumstances, it could have gone into a war. Mm -hmm. But I chose to direct it in such a direction, in such a way that it was peaceful. The kids had they were calm, it was so smooth, and we really did our best for the good of the children. Mm -hmm. That is an accomplishment. I could run a course on how to, <laughs> <laughs> how to do that. That's true. How to, you know, go, um, go through a, a separation and keep your sanity. <laughs> like literally. And that's my gold dust. So you mm -hmm. see, it's all the experiences, it's all your proof indicators, it's your gifts, it's your talents, it's your passion. And when you look at all that, and you connect the dots together, you can see where your strong points are. You can connect the dots and say, oh, well, I have done this and I'm passionate about that. How can I put that together? And then we, what I call, we weave mm. the passion, we weave the skills, we weave the proof indicators, and then we create what I call a warrior authority biography. Mm. This is like mm. your master resume of who you are, what you represent your values and your strengths and where you have credibility in, where you have um, authority and where you have exclusiveness because mm. that's where your power lies. That's your positioning power. Mm. So that's the gold dust effect. And that's how we transform it into a gold nugget by connecting the dots and ultimately creating a program around that. But also we look into your story, your warrior story, because that's also where your gold dust is. The journey that you have been through, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They say, oh, but who cares about my story? I mean, hey, how many people have gone bankrupt? How many people have stood in front of a pawnbroker shop? Like, what? who cares about, why is my story special? Mm -hmm. Now, that is a, a, that is a hoax if mm -hmm. you think your, your story is not special. Right. What makes it special is the way you experience it. 
Correct. So we can have the same event. Let's say somebody's gone bankrupt, the business is flopped. So the way each person experiences it is different. Somebody Correct. standing from this perspective has a different experience and will experience it differently and has different insights than from somebody who's sitting on this side and will have a different experience. So what makes you unique is how you experience that event and your insights, mm -hmm. your takeaways that you are now going to package and help others with. How do you help someone? Because because every what I'm hearing right now too is, I'm at that point right now in my in my life where you know I think my goal does have turned into nuggets, right? And I'm able to kind of and we'll talk about your shifts here in a second because we got to talk about those. I'm 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 excited to talk about your shifts, but um, for that person who is who's apprehensive about their story and about being able to truly kind of identify. How, how important their story is because they may have experienced trauma, they may have experienced something else, but you know, there are just so many people out there that are just so apprehensive to whether it's self-doubt, whether it's low self-esteem. You know, the, the, the part that I truly enjoy about you know, connecting with you and listening to you is your freedom of, of, of being who you are. How can you help someone or how to, Give somebody some some advice on how they can like just truly like be at peace with who they are, be comfortable with who you are, they are. Because I think yeah. that's a, a massive strength that you have. You need to own your gold dust. It's yeah. that simple. There's no yeah. magic, um, or there's yeah. no yeah, there's no magic secret or okay. shortcut. You need to own your gold dust, meaning your story, who yeah. you are, your triumphs, your setbacks, your failures. Because you know what? They're no longer yours. Mm. They are no longer yours. You've experienced it, finish, gone, done. They're now yours to give away. Mm. They're yours to now um, use as an instrument to empower others. Own your gold dust. Look at your accomplishments and own them. Too often we say we don't give ourselves credit. So for me, how do you be as real as possible? Mm -hmm. Own your gold dust. Own, and I said, your gold dust is also your passion. I love dancing. I mm -hmm. love music. Mm -hmm. And this is how I express myself. Yes. And this is how I attract my tribe. Because you know what? Nobody's really interested in your programs. Nobody's really interested in your services. People are interested in who you are beyond that. So, so I make it a priority to express my truth because I know that people that connect with that truth will be attracted and those that are not will be repelled. Yes, yes. So we have a natural filter of, you know, um, who your tribe is and who your people are. Your people are those, your tribe are those that, mm -hmm. one, share similar values. Maybe not in the same hierarchy, but they share similar values. They have a similar story. Mm -hmm. So how else can you find your tribe if you don't share your story, right? How else can you find your tribe if you don't share of yourself, of what you love doing, what your passions are, right? You find your tribe by speaking your language. Mm -hmm. You see, in, in, in Ghana, where I'm from, my mm -hmm. father came from the Ashanti tribe. Mm -hmm. And the Ashanti tribe, um, they also have a branch out tribe called the um, Fanti. So we have the Ashantis mm -hmm. and the Fanti. So the language is similar because mm -hmm. the Fantis came from the Ashanti. Mm -hmm. so the language is similar. So if I went to Ghana and I was speaking a mixture of the Ashanti language and the Fanti, they would both hear me. Right. But then right. they would see that, ah, but she's either she's mixed yeah. Here is a bit there. So they're not, not, nobody's really going, even though they may listen, they may get some few ideas and, you know, there's some value, but they never really stick to you. Mm. So when I speak their language, I speak to their pains. I speak to their sufferings. I speak to their, the anguish that they're struggling with. 
For example, my tribe are people that want to create an online course, right? They're passionate about helping mm-hmm. others. Mm-hmm. So like, the pain, I know the pain. It's like you're, you're, you're trying to navigate uncharted oceans. You're confused on who your tribe is. They don't know how to find their tribe, right? <laughs> They're mm-hmm. unclear on how to create the framework that right. they, they need those pillars to hold their program together, right? All these things are so overwhelming. I know these pains because I've been through them. Mm-hmm. So I speak to that. Mm. so oh. that's how that's how you you own your truth and you be as real as possible know your story own your gold dust express that share that let them experience that speak their language and they will be attracted to you as you share of yourselves they too will share of themselves as you trust them they too will trust you and this is going to be applied in organizations too often we think we have to create this, uh, this we have this facade or this kind of mask of we are not allowed to do this we're not allowed to do that or you get fired for that or maybe you're not they will not like me for that i have a client she worked in corporate america for 20 years mm-hmm. and she had she almost lost her life from chronic stress disease hmm. until her doctor told her that, you know what, you are, you are overstressed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For 20 years, she was living an imposter, as an imposter, this, this imposter syndrome. Yes, yes. Because she could never really tell of her story. She never she didn't feel comfortable because everybody else, she was like in an environment which wasn't created for her. Correct, correct. Mm. Mm. So now she's using her story to help other leaders in the organization, in corporate America, leaders who are thriving in environments which were not created for them. So they feel the imposter, they, they don't feel, they don't express their truth. They're hiding behind a, a mask and it's killing them softly. It's killing them slowly. So she's creating this program, helping her create this program where she takes them through a, a journey of un, unearthing the treasures, unearthing the truth so that they do not have to hide anymore so it's a whole beautiful journey so she's using her, her truth her journey her, her story to create a program oh gosh so i hope you guys i hope the listeners you just heard i mean there's so much in there but one of the major takeaways i just wrote down was a lot of you are living in an environment that's not made for you you are you are and you have a facade on right now that you have created over time. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, and that leads this, you. This, yes, this, go is ahead. To, go this is this is speaking to us, the minorities, especially, right? Yes, yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. And I uh, and I think that's that's part of the, I don't know, that's part of the issue too, right? Is that you know, you know, we, we, we create these facades so, for so long and they just become so deeply ingrained in who we are. And it's so hard. It is so hard to kind of pull back the layers of your truth to talk about who you are because we're afraid of what people may think. And to your point, you just have to own it. You have to own, own your truth, own your story. Um, can we talk a little bit about, because I think this goes part and parcel with everything, right? You, you, you just did um, some posts that I just thought were amazing. And um, when you talked about five shifts and, and I know the shifts, you know, we're, we're primarily speaking to like coaches and, and things like that. But I think just, I honestly just think everything that you talk about has so much validity to just, just the regular, you know, business person, individual that's really trying to find themselves as well. So I don't know if you get, maybe you do that on purpose or not, but anytime I'm listening to you, I'm like, this isn't just for coaches. Like, <laughs> 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 this, is, this isn't just for coaches, dude. This is, this is for everybody who's struggling with something else. This yeah. is for the man, the woman who feels self-doubt. This is for the man and woman who are trying to find their tribe. They're trying to find their story and they haven't taken the, 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 correct, the correct measures to shift. And so could you talk about, how, um, and I know you know them already, but um, I, I'm just going to, you know, go down the line and I'll, we'll, start with, we'll start with the first one and go down our line and then we could talk about each one. So shift mm-hmm. number one is, is, if I'm correct, is to share your story, which is yeah. something which you, which you just spoke yes. about. If you, if, <laughs> Uh, so, so go ahead. Yeah. So let me explain. So these five shifts, right? The five shifts were created specifically for those leader, co- leader, leadership coaches, 
coaches that wanted to create a presence online. Mm -hmm. But this can also be applied to any leader and a leader of your own life. You don't have to be a leader in an organization. No, we are all leaders. That, that mother, you know, that <laughs> we're all leaders. So yeah, share your story. You see, too often we hide behind our story. We hide behind our insecurities. But the truth is, when we share more of ourselves, of our experiences, of our insights, of our um, triumphs, of our failures, when we share more of that, mm -hmm. this is a powerful sign of trust. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Mm -hmm. When you don't share of yourself because you're, you're fearful, it's because you don't trust the people. You don't trust them. You think they're going to judge you. You think they're going to laugh at you. You think they're going to ridicule you because they think they're not, they're not going to like you. That is not trust. So when you come from a space of such scarcity and such lack, mm -hmm. that, that energy, remember energy? Yes. We're all uh, vibrational beings. We're all energy. That energy is not going to help you grow as an individual. It's not going to help you grow as a coach or as a leader because you're coming from a space of lack. Mm -hmm. Come from a space of, you know, abundance, space of giving of yourself, a space of trust. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you trust, notice they will trust you back. They will also trust you. And they will, they, the more you trust them, the more they trust you. Notice it's, 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 it's such, there's so much evidence to prove this principle, but yet people are still fearful because they allow the fear to cloud the truth. That yes. the more you share of yourself, the more they will trust you and the more they align you with you. You know what? Those that don't, then they don't. That is the best natural filter you could ever, uh, you know, <laughs> in, 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 invent. I completely agree. I mean, that is, it is, it is the number one filter is to, is to be your authentic self because you will, you will attract those people who share your values, share your experiences and those who don't, Okay. And, yes. And you know what? If they don't, then maybe you're not you're in the wrong place. I, I agree. I think <laughs> here's what I think. I think if you don't, I think you're in that environment that that's not meant for you still. Yeah. Right. Because you're not sharing, you're not sharing your story. Shift, shift number two, um, disconnect yourself um, from a post. And you, I think you just said, you said, um, is that, is that correct? Yeah. Disattach yourself from that's expecting. Good. Expecting. That's it. So, this is a tricky one for many because, you know, expect, I expect to get yes. this. I expect to receive. And um, I created this point mainly for, of course, my niche, the, 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 these coaches that want to be visible and that want to be seen and that want to attract their, to their tribe. So we create content and content is not only post or articles. Content is the way you, you, you communicate. Correct. Content is, is, a, is a phone call. Content is a meeting. Content is anything that comes out of your mouth or from your mind to your mouth to your, to your hands and right into the paper or into the phone. It's anything that you communicate content. So when you disattach yourself from expecting something, mm -hmm. it's a powerful space of energy to come from. Because what does expecting do? So look at this scenario. I'm creating a post and I've put so much work into it. Mm -hmm. Look at it from a different perspective. If you're listening to this, you can apply it into your situation. Correct. You're creating something and you've put your whole heart and soul into it. You're putting so much value into it. And you're now posting it out there, hoping that you will get an inbound lead, hoping that you get that promotion, hoping that you will get that client from this post because it was so, I mean, this is, this is this kind of secret sauce I share with my clients only, right? <laughs> so I, I better get a client from this one, right? That expectation. You know what? That energy is an energy of, of taking. Mm, mm, mm. You're taking. So uh, 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 that energy is one of luck. If you're only taking, so you're expecting and you're taking, then you're not going to show up as powerfully. You're not going to create the abundance because you know what? The energy of taking doesn't have, doesn't equate abundance. So shift the energy and disattach yourself. If I'm giving, I'm giving that it will impact somebody's life. I'm giving that this leader that I'm creating this project for, this manager, he, he will get that 
that badge of recognition yes whatever if he recognizes me too great if he doesn't well i've done my job for example mm -hmm. you know uh, post it out there give that value with no expectation but of giving and when you come from the energy of giving that is an energy of trust that's an energy of abundance this this one number two and, and number three we'll get to in a second but number two hit home for me so much because I was I was that expectation person. Um, I was I I did a speech and I did a I created this this speech around consumerism and it what it is it's really it's just a matter of you just consume the content and the energy if you will from other people without giving. You you take their knowledge, you take their their thoughts, you you take the, you take what they probably feed into your life. But you don't give anything in return. As a young leader, growing up, that was me, and it just it it, it took it it took a massive, uh, you know, um, situation in my life to realize was that I was just a consumer. Mm -hmm. I was just consuming relationships. I was just consuming knowledge, and I wasn't really giving anything in return. It wasn't until I made that shift, if you will, to mm -hmm. this right here of not, not expecting within those relationships or those situations that I started, I, I became free. I mm -hmm. became freer to share any, everything that kind of came, in, came yeah. into my being and came into my mind. I was able to share more. And so that one, when you did that one that day, I was just like, I, I don't think I posted anything to you or respond to you that day because I, I it hit home. And I was just like, I was like, okay, Veronica's all in my wheelhouse with that one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't post, post a response. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. But you see, look, notice what happens when you come from that space of energy of taking. Yes. So when things don't exactly go as planned, you know, then you get frustrated right? Then this is energy of resistance, right? Yes. And then the resistance becomes uh, anger. And then you're, that energy from that resistance, you're, you're not attracting, you're not opening the floodgates of abundance to you. You're actually closing the gates with that kind of energy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when you're, when you're giving with the expect, expecting something out of it, right? It shifts the energy to something which is not creative. Mm -hmm. So the shift of, of giving without expectation actually goes down to trust. Yes. yes. Again, it's not yes. like, oh, I'm giving all my knowledge and I don't, whatever happens. And hey, we all have bills to pay at the end of the day. But the truth is when you give, you trust. Mm. I'm just giving by trust. Who will hear it? It will fall into the right ears. Right. And if it's supposed to touch somebody's life today and that person wants to reach out or wants to hear more or wants to follow me or wants to tag me, whatever, it will happen. Let it happen because I trust that the worlds behind closed doors are moving for me. <laughs> yes, the universe is moving world and like a puzzle. Like you can, you can imagine that clockwork and things moving just for you. <laughs> Oh gosh! So so shift, and this just leads us into shift shift number three, right? Which is um, stop using wrong language. Stop using the wrong language, right? Or how how do you put it? How do you push? Uh, put, Say mind your language. Mind your language. Yes, as a leader, um, this of course also was directed to the coaches that I work with because I noticed that when things are not going as planned or when things are just not going your way, you use the language of it's hard. Mm. Oh, it's frustrating. Oh, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what hard is? I think I gave that in my post. <laughs> hard is my grandmother, right? Mm. In Ghana, in the village. She, come, she came from a cocoa farm. Hard is standing under the scorching sun with a hole and, you know, <laughs> digging the soil and planting those crops and, waiting, you know, harvesting them, putting in your head and walking around through the market to sell them so that he could have some money to send my, my dad to school. Mm. That's hard. Yes. So <laughs> when you use such language, like I said, again, all going back to the energy, we're all energy. So our <laughs> words are also energy. So when things you say, like, um, it's hard, it's frustrating. What do you think you're creating more of? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. More things that are hard, more things that are frustrating. You're misaligned totally. Right. Change the language that, okay, well, maybe things didn't go as planned, but you know, I'm learning 
What else can I do differently? How did I create this, right? What can I recreate and how can I do this differently? It's not hard, it's not frustrating. If that's what you're experiencing, then you are misaligned. Mm. That is the tough love I'm gonna give you. If you are overstressed, if you are frustrated with the situation in your life or in your business, if you know you think every single thing is hard to get, if things are a struggle, mm. there is some kind of misalignment there. Mm. Because that is not the natural state of life. Right. That is not natural. We have come as a society to think these things are natural. You know, stress is natural. Oh, it's part of life. Oh, you know, um, oh, when, when you experience these frustrations, it's life, it's, that's it, that's, that's life, right? That's what we say, it's life. No, it isn't. Mm. I come from the belief that life comes with ease and flow. Mm. Imagine a bottle of water, a bottle of murky water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's foggy, it's unclear, right? You're shaking it. But when you put the bottle down and leave it to be, what happens, <laughs> what happens to the mark? It settles the, at the bottom. It does. And what happens to the water? It gets pure. It gets pure. The natural bloody state of water. <laughs> that is the natural state of water. Clear. Crystal clear. Yes. Transparent. So that is a natural state of being human. Clear. Mm. Calm. Mm. A peace. Yeah. Hmm. I thought you had more. I was waiting. I, was <laughs> <laughs> I, I left you in suspense. But I, I, I left you wanting more. <laughs> you did. I was like, I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, all right, go ahead, keep going, keep going. <laughs> because, yeah, oh, wow. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, there's so many things about mind your language and everything that you just said. But for the sake of just time, because I know yeah. <laughs> um, we want to get through these last two and then kind of close everything up. But uh, number shift number four, because um, I love this one too. I love uh, this actually. So it wasn't number three; it was number four for me too. Mm -hmm. That that really started me like, okay, dude, she's just oh, she's like she's, she's in my right mind. There. She's right there. <laughs> she's right there in my mind. I think I I actually think I posted something on this one too. But um, keep creating, mm -hmm. keep on creating, right? Yeah. Yes. The more you create, the more, the more you create, the more you become. Yeah. The more you create, the more you get creative. So this again was directed to my niche, right? The coaches, the consultants, the leaders that really want to show up and serve more powerfully, but are getting a bit discouraged, right? So the whole idea is when you create a post, when you create mm -hmm. something, a project, or when you um, create a book, write an article, imagine giving it to a dove. Mm -hmm. Imagine letting the dove go with that message. Let it go and it flies. It flies into the blue sky and it sends the message. Mm -hmm. Imagine a ship with a messenger it sails away to the horizon and you've let it go. So when you create, let it go. And then come back to your desk, come back to your table and keep on creating. Mm. Because the more, create, the more you create, the more creative you get, the more inspiration you get, the more ideas you get, right? And the more a better kind of um, inspired action you take. Mm. So when you create, and it all boils down also to, to disattaching yourself, right? Let it go, ship it away, let it fly. The, 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 the people are listening mm. and come back and create. Don't stop, in other words, don't give up. <laughs> don't stop creating. Be always in that mode of creating, creating from a space of passion, from a space of purpose. You know, when people say, I don't know what to create, I don't know what co content to post, I don't know what to write about in my articles or in my posts or in my content strategy. Huh. If you don't know what to write, mm. if you don't know what to post, another sign of misalignment. Right. Because if you have clarity on who your tribe is, if you have clarity on your pain points, if you have clarity on what exactly that they want, if you have clarity on your story, there's always something to share. So create and be more creative. Create and become more creative as you grow. So I always say, Come back and create. Don't stop because maybe you haven't got a result from that one post. Keep on creating. 
<laughs> so when I heard this, I every uh, almost every day because it was you know it's a newer podcast, and so I'm looking at the numbers. And I'm like, oh my gosh, and we've you know and we've been growing, growing, growing. And then when I heard this, I took two days off from looking at it and just starting creating more. Yes. I just said, yes. I said, I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look. I said, I'm not gonna yeah. look. I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm just going to go back and, and start creating more and not looking at the result. And then I, yeah, so then I, I did, I checked today and I was like, oh, I was like, I mean, just, just growth. But what you, but what you did for me, and I think what you, what you're doing for other people is that alignment piece is making sure that you know, my, my output, everything that I'm going after is actually going to go towards, go towards what uh, my purpose is and stop looking at this, yes. stop, stop looking at, looking at the, the actual, sometimes we look at the end result too much as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that can shift over time as you know, because, you know, as, as you always talk about, you know, if you're, if you're misaligned, then you tend to go in this one direction and you feel, you may feel comfortable. Um, but when you're aligned, man, there is no end result because things are growing and growing and growing. I had a great conversation with a, a, a brother in, in Nigeria mm -hmm. and he and I were talking and we were talking about, you know, um, worthy leadership group. And he, we were talking, he was like, I'm just so happy. I said, well, we talking about, I'm so happy that you don't have it all figured out. <laughs> and, uh, he said, he, he said, I'm, I'm sorry. He's, he's a smart guy, a massive leader in, in over in Nigeria. He said, I'm just so happy you don't have it all figured out because that when you try to have it all figured out, you put limits on yourself, mm -hmm. you know, you put limits on yourself. And so, um, so that post just struck home to me and I think it's going to strike home to everybody else as well, too. <laughs> so last shift, number five, um, showing up, right? Sh showing up because your tribe is watching. Yes. So the last shift was to have faith. Yeah, faith. You have to build. I, I've messed up every single one of these. No, shifts you haven't. Like <laughs> you just, the, the wording is different, but the same meaning. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, have faith. And it boils down to that. Um, this was, of course, again, directed to my niche, right? The, the coaches, the consultants, the leaders, the experts, those that want to really show up and create a visible presence, mm. not only because they want to be visible, but being visible, not popular, but visible, because then you, you, your tribe sees you and your tribe is drawn to you, right? So have faith that people are watching. Mm. Too often we get um, this trap on how many comments, how many likes, and then we can get a bit discouraged. I've gone through that as well. Hey, we've, mm -hmm. I've been on this journey on LinkedIn for over three years now. So I can I totally remember how it was. And when you have faith that, you know what, behind those closed doors, mm. there's magic happening. Behind, underneath that soil that I have planted and I've sowed my seed, magic is happening. The roots are being, you know, are, 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 are digging into the soil. Things are happening. I don't see it. Mm. I don't see it. Does the farmer see it? Right. That his, his harvest is going to um, be, be in a few months their crops going to be everywhere? Does he see what's going on? No, he leaves it. Mm. He, he sowed his seeds. He, he trusts that the, the universe and the, the, the um, forces of nature will do its job. Mm -hmm. The farmer keeps on planting seeds and some seeds will fall on barren land. We know the mm -hmm. parable of the farmer. Some mm -hmm. seeds mm -hmm. will be eaten by the birds. Correct. Some seeds will um, grow and the, they'll sprout, but they will be destroyed by some natural mm -hmm. force. Some will fall on pavements, and, but some will fall on fertile soil and will root and will sprout and will flourish and they will harvest. That is all based on faith and trust, isn't it? The <laughs> farmer trusts. The farmer trusts. Listen, That's can right. you imagine if farmers didn't trust? Exactly. And they'll, they'll not be planting anything. <laughs> <laughs> so have faith that beneath that which you do not see worlds are moving for you things are happening but you have to be aligned you have to be aligned because when you are aligned with who you are your truth your mission your purpose success is guaranteed i'm going to dare to say that <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your your 
your success, when I say success, I mean the balance between mind, body, and soul, because that's for me success, is a harmony. It's a harmonious, you know, um, orchestra mm. of life. Mm. So when you have that, have faith that it will be yours and you're just claiming what is yours already. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. There's so much, there's so, we, we can go on um, and on, but um, Veronica Owusu, I wanna thank you so much for being on The Worthy Podcast and just taking the time to share with us your gold dust and that is turned that is that is turned into nuggets for yourself, but more importantly, I can see why you're so why you're so successful, because you are truly your authentic self. Um, it came out today um, as I knew it would. Um, <laughs> you, you left me on edge with a couple of questions. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate. No, I don't appreciate that, but I appreciate. I appreciate, <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm still a little upset because you live in Manchester and you're not a mm. Manchester City fan. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, you know, but hopefully I, I'll, I'll be able to turn you into a Manchester City fan over time. I, and I'm over here all the way across the pond. Can you believe that? And I'm a I massive know, yeah. Can Manchester you believe that? Fan. I know. <laughs> Who right? knows? I know. You never know. You never know. But but thank you so much for, for being on The Worthy Podcast. And I appreciate that. <laughs>